Hello everyone, welcome to another Get Wisdom video. Well first, I would like to thank my Father and God of our Lord Jesus Christ for this opportunity to be here and share the Gospel of Jesus to you. Father, thank you so much for this grace. I appreciate you Lord. Thank you for this opportunity, for this grace Father God that you've given me, that you've put this in my heart to share the Gospel of Jesus to the whole world. Thank you Father God for the grace. I appreciate you. I thank you. I give you all the praise. To you be all the glory, honor, power, and praise, Father. I give you all the praise, Jesus. Amen. Well, today I want to talk about praying and fasting. I know this topic, like so many of you, you already know about praying and fasting, and I know so many people are acquainted with fasting. But I just want to add from what you already know. So, and then, uh, I want to share with you from what I understood through my experience and by studying the Bible. You know, Jesus spoke about praying and fasting. Now, there's a difference between fasting and praying and praying and fasting. It's not the same. And what the Bible recommends, especially in this New Testament time, the Bible talks about praying and fasting. You see, fasting changes your body. Fasting positions your spirit to receive from God. But fasting doesn't give you any blessing from God. It is only prayer that downloads the blessing from heaven. So, when the Bible talks about praying and fasting, what Jesus was really talking about, he was focusing on prayer. His mind was on prayer. He wanted the disciples to catch the part of praying, not the part of fasting. Because God answers prayers. God does not answer fasting. You know, I'm saying this because so many believers, uh, based on the churches they grew up with, or maybe, uh, based on the knowledge they were taught, based on what they were taught as they were growing up in their various churches, they were given some doctrine about fasting. Some they say, you know, we have to fast for you know, uh, maybe 21 days, maybe 40 days. You know, 40 days is common for so many people, uh, for so many believers all over the world. But they miss out the part of prayer. That's something which is very important, you know. Because when you look at Jesus, when he went to the mountain to pray, when he went to the mountain, I already said he went to pray. He went to the mountain. The Bible says that he, he, he stayed 40 days, 40 nights without food, no water. What was he doing? He was praying. Now, praying is the real subject when it comes to fasting not fasting the reason why you fast is because you're praying but some people they pray because they're fasting and that's a problem that's why many people they can fast for 100 days and nothing happens some they fast for 40 days they say pastor i fasted for 40 days nothing happened i fasted for 21 days nothing happened some they say you know we have to fast esther esther fasting 21 days i don't know where they take all that from but but the point is that uh, fasting does not change God. Fasting changes you. Some they say we we fast Daniel 21 days. Some they say Esther three days. Some they say we fast like Jesus 40 days. But they miss out what is it that was in the fasting. Now the Old Testament is not the same like the New Testament. We are in the New Testament. In the New Testament we are the people of prayer. Not just fasting, we are the people of prayer. And I'm telling you, what is important now is prayer, not just fasting. And if if you want to fast, let the Holy Spirit guide you into fasting. I do fast. The Holy Spirit leads me into fasting. But most of the times, I'm always praying. The Holy Spirit leads me into prayer. He leads me into prayer. So the reason why you fast should be the fact that you are praying, not that you are praying because you are fasting, no. But you should fast because you are praying. Your mind should be on fasting. Your focus should be on fasting. That's what Jesus is looking at. Because God answers prayer. God responds to words that we speak, not to an empty stomach. This is something that I want the church to catch because for many years we've been living 
you know, with some old doctrines. You, you see, the world is coming to an end, and the world is passing away. And, that, and now, the old doctrine needs to be left behind. We need to catch what the Holy Spirit is giving. It pertaining to this end time. You see, those fasting where you just fast and fast and fast and then you sleep, you say, you know, I'm fasting, and then you sit outside, you say, I'm fasting. And maybe you pray just five minutes only, and you expect God to change your whole family, or maybe to change your children, or maybe your husband, or maybe your wife, or maybe you want God to change your financial situation with five-minute prayer because you are fasting. No, that is wrong. The right way is you should be in prayer. You should position yourself to pray. Your focus is on prayer. So because you are praying, you don't want to waste any time. So you leave out food. You leave out anything else that might disturb your praying process. So your focus is your praying. So you, you, you put out anything that might disturb your prayer. So you call it fasting. It's not only fasting from food. You fast, even from, you fast from even other activities around you. The things that you normally do every day. You leave them behind. Why? Because you are praying. You are praying. Your focus should be on prayer. You remember, there was a time one man, he had a son with a demon spirit, a dumb and deaf spirit. And this man he brought this son to the disciples because Jesus was busy. He was also praying for some people. So the man saw that since the disciples were, are with Jesus, so I can give my son to them to be prayed for. So this man brought the son to the disciples. And the, and the disciples, they prayed, they cast out the demon, but the demon could not go. They commanded the demon to leave, but the demon couldn't go. So the man took the son to Jesus, said, Lord, he said, Master, I brought my son to your disciples to cast out the demon, but they couldn't. Then Jesus, he commanded the demon, the demon left. Uh, you, you can read this from the book of uh, Mark chapter 9. Let me just read. Mark chapter 9 from verse 25. From verse 25. I read. Mark chapter 9 from verse 25. I read. When Jesus saw that the people running. I read again. When Jesus saw that the people came running together. He rebuked the false spirit. Saying to him. You dumb and deaf spirit. I charge you. Come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him and he was as one dead. So that many said he is dead. Verse 27. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. 28. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said to them, verse 29, And he said to them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Now, the reason why Jesus spoke this statement, he was trying to show them that there are some things that in the spirit they cannot change unless you pray and fast. He didn't say, this can, can come out by fasting and praying. He said by praying and fasting. That means you are praying. So the reason why you are fasting is because you are praying. So your fasting should be the reason for your prayer. Not your prayer should be the reason for your fasting. No. The, the, the reason why you fast is because you are praying. You are praying. So you don't want anything to disturb you including food. You fast taking meals. You fast, chat with friends, you leave out your mobile phone, you, you, you don't put yourself in front of your TV, you don't sit outside and chat with your friends, you are praying, you are praying and fasting. So, you are fasting so that your mind should focus on what you're praying for. You want God to do this thing for you. So, you don't want anything else to disturb you. That's when you talk about fasting. But your focus should be prayer. Because I've seen so many people that they say they are fasting, but you look at them, they are walking around just to make sure the time is going. And then, you know, I'm, I'm fasting from 6 to 6, so they, they can be busy maybe on TV, playing with their telephone. Their minds, their mind is somewhere else. 
You see, before you start to pray and fast, you should have a goal. There, there should be something that you want God to do for you. It's not just a matter of I'm fasting and then you don't know what you're, you're expecting God to do for you. You say, you know, we are fasting. Fasting changes things. Fasting does not change things. Prayer changes things. Several times we read in the New Testament, Jesus said, pray. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. The Bible talks about Elijah. When you read the book of James chapter 5, Elijah, he said he prayed, he prayed earnestly that it, sh- it should not rain on earth. And for three and a half years, rain didn't come on the whole universe, on the whole earth. They didn't see any rain on the whole earth. One man prayed. And as he was praying, he fasted. He didn't eat. So, so, so the focus is prayer. And then after three and a half years, he prayed again. And rain came down upon the earth. Jesus Christ prayed. One man prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. And in the process of prayer, he didn't eat food. Why? He didn't want disturbance. He wanted to pray. So your focus should be on prayer, not on fasting. Fasting does not change God to bless you. But prayer makes God bless you. God doesn't respond to an empty stomach. He responds to words that we speak. Let this sink in your mind. Let your spiritual life build up in this 2021. We are in the end time now. So the old school knowledge, the old school information, you, we need to leave it out. That's for babies. It's time now to grow up spiritually. You can never grow up by only fasting. You grow up by praying. Because even those who follow the devil, they fast. They fast. But I'm talking about what makes God to bless you. It's prayer. You are you have to give yourself to prayer. You are praying. You are praying. You are praying. Your focus is prayer. God, I want to change this. I want this to change. So your mind is on prayer. Nothing else disturbs you. Those are the prayers that get answers. Those are the prayers that make God to come and give you what you want. So your focus should be on prayer. Not just, I'm fasting. No. Prayer. Prayer is what... Is that which changes things and so many christians they run away from praying i know what i'm saying so many believers they run away from praying and yet that is the most important part the only focus you know we are fasting i fasted for 40 days you know i fasted for 21 days i fasted for 100 days but nothing changed i have seen people who fasted who have who have been fasting and fasting nothing changed because they didn't understand the concept of fasting jesus spoke about prayer not fasting and they talk about esther you know, I, need, I fasted Esther three days, three nights, no food, no water. No, you are not Esther. You are who you are. The Bible says that we are in, the, in a generation of Christ Jesus. We are in Christ. You are not in Esther. You are not in Daniel. You are in Christ. So do what Christ tells you. So Christ says, pray and not to faint. Whatever you need, ask God in prayer. Whatever you desire, Pray to God your Father and He shall give it to you in the name of Jesus. That's what the Bible says. The Holy Spirit says He shall lead us into prayer. So what's your focus? Prayer. Prayer should be your focus. So as you're praying, as you're praying, as you're praying, you set your mind on this thing that I want to get from God. I want to see a change. So your focus should be, I'm, I'm praying. I don't want anything to disturb me. So I will not eat. I'm fasting anything else because I want to pray now in my next video I'll talk about the kind of prayer which is effective because people pray so many prayers but there's some prayers which are effective that when you pray you change things you break mountains now I'm on I'm not just talking to you uh, because you know God gave me the opportunity to speak to your words no but I, I'm only telling you my experience I'm talking about what I do I've tried this fasting, but what God told me throughout the years when the angels came and told me about some situations, they told me, pray. They didn't tell me to fast. They said, pray. Whatever I, whenever I hear God's word talking, he tell me, pray. If I'm looking for something, he tells me, pray. It, it's about prayer. It's about prayer. And in the process of praying, in the process of praying, I can fast. I don't eat food. Most of my time when I'm praying for something, I don't eat. I don't eat. But my goal is not an empty stomach. I'm looking for prayer. 
Because God does not respond to my empty stomach. He responds to prayer. Prayer is that which is important to our Christian walk in this generation. Now, this same thing, for example, like you want to pray to change a city. You know, I've seen, for example, like in USA, there are some cities which they are going through so much evil. You know, you, you know, too much evil is, is taking place to some cities in the United States of America. And then I see some 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 preachers they come online you know they they just make a simple prayer you know father we believe that you know you you are alive and you're on the throne we thank you that everything is changed in jesus name we hope for the good and they stop there no see when you're praying you are dealing with spirits that's what jesus said that this kind can come out by nothing but by prayer and fasting he was looking at the level of the demon which tormented that boy it was a demon you are talking about authority. The Bible says when you pray, especially in spirit, in tongues, God fills you with power. He gives you power, authority. Your spirit gains authority. When you're fasting, your spirit gains nothing. Only your body loses something. But your spirit does not gain anything. But your, your fasting puts your spirit at a position that you can receive something from God. So what do you do? You losing from your flesh. So you must gain in your spirit by prayer. So your prayer is what makes now God to fill you with power, with authority. Those are the prayers that Jesus said that this kind can come out, but by prayer and fasting only. So your focus should be on prayer. Now, I'm talking about those, some cities now which there's too much evil. The point is that an e uh, too much evil reigns in the city simply because of demons so as a believer our power is in the spirit i've said this several times our power is in the spirit so what we do is you pray in the spirit to command that devil to leave that city you command the demon to leave that city in the spirit you have to pray in the spirit i rebuke that devil in the name of jesus i command every spirit of darkness to come out of this city i'm talking about what i've done and you see that the more you pray, it's not just one day prayer. You continue to pray until you see a change. It's not about five minutes prayer. Oh, God has heard. God is not deaf. God is not blind. No. The Bible says that Jesus, he was always praying. Jesus was always praying. And yet he was so powerful. He would kick out the demons. He would raise the dead. Afterwards, he would go back in prayer. Why? To maintain the power. To maintain the authority in the spirit. Because he, uh, he, he understood that life is spiritual. He was dealing with spirits, not the flesh. The Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. He was talking about spirits. How do you deal with them? Through prayer. Not just fasting. Prayer. Words should come out of your mouth. Those words commanding them to leave the city, to leave the lives of your family members. When you speak words like that, you find the demons will leave. The demons will go. The demons can come out. Command demons to leave your family. Command demons to come out from your children, from your husband or from your wife. Or from any family member that you have that you know that he's disturbed, his mind is not okay or maybe he has some problems. Command the demon to leave them. You command the demon to leave them. The demons will go but the Bible says you have to pray and fast pray and fast interceding for them continually you continue to pray you must continue to pray you must continue to pray until you get an answer for example like I said if you pray for a city okay like for example those people in the United States of America okay they say you know there's too much evil going on in some cities there Christians are supposed to be praying and fasting not just fasting praying a lot as they are praying, they should continue until the answer comes, until there is a change. It's very easy to deal with the spiritual beings, I'm telling you. It's easy. It's easy to deal with the spirits, especially the demons, because the power is given to us by Jesus. All power is given to the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus has authority in the spirit, and the spiritual controls the physical. It is the spirit realm that controls the physical realm. So the power is in the spirit. That's why Jesus took the spiritual power from the devil. When he took it, he took it to heaven. And then said, I've given you power and, and authority. Why? He gave us the power to control the spiritual. Because the spiritual controls the physical. 
Now when you're fasting, you're only dealing with the flesh. But in your spirit, you're empty. So what do you do? You pull power from the spirit through prayer. You pull power from the spirit through prayer. So the more you pray, the more you gain the power. Jesus Christ fills you with power. The Holy Spirit fills you with the power. The Bible says that how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. This is how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. How did he do it? How did Jesus gain that power? The time that he prayed for the days and for the nights in the wilderness. That was the time that God filled him with power. When he was baptized with John, the Bible says the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form as a dove and rested upon Jesus. That time he received the Holy Spirit. He received the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that he was led by the Holy Spirit to the wilderness to pray. And he spent there 40 days, 40 nights praying. As he prayed, he fasted. And in the process of prayer, he received power. Hallelujah. He received power. <laughs> power to kick out demons. Now, I know of a man of God in Nigeria, Prophet D.B. Joshua. He's my favorite prophet of God. That man, he also prayed 40 days, 40 nights without food, without water. He was praying until God visited him. He was praying. If you listen to his message, you say that he was praying. His prayer, he talks about prayer. If you follow his ministry, he talks about prayer. If you watch his videos, he leads people into prayer. It's about prayer. Power comes to a man through prayer. So, if you're a minister of God, and you're looking for the power of God, simple, prayer. Devote yourself to prayer. This is the part which so many believers, they run away from. They say, you know, we, we can just fast. And so many pastors in churches, they tell people, let's go fast, let's go. Tell people to pray. Teach people how to pray. This is very important because prayer is what will change them. Not just fasting. Anyone can fast. Fasting is easy. I can stay without food. If I don't have food, I can stay without food. But praying is the most important part. That's the spiritual part of life. Prayer is spiritual. You deal with your spirit. And you make God to give you what you're looking for. Anyway, I've got so much to say on this. Now, in the next video, I'm going to talk about praying. Praying. How can we pray? Especially praying in tongues. Because there are so many Christians out there who speak in tongues, but they've not, they've not prayed to a certain level. And so they don't see the, the, the real importance of spending much time praying in tongues. So in my next video, I'll talk about my own experience uh, in praying in tongues. You see, to be where I am today is prayer. I've been praying in tongues since the day I got born again in 1998 when I was at the age of 14. From that time until now, I speak in tongues to the maximum level. There is no prayer that I make in tongues that doesn't get an answer. Whatever I prayed for, I get it. So I'm just talking about your life should focus on prayer. When you focus on prayer, then God shall give you an answer. Don't just only fast, but pray. Your mind should be on prayer. Remember, prayer changes you and makes God to give you the blessing. Fasting does not change God to give you a blessing. Fasting only changes your body. But your prayer changes your spirit and positions you and makes you receive a blessing from God. So I pray for you that as you are focusing today, as you are meditating on this subject of praying and fasting, may God bless you with the ability to pray and fast in the name of Jesus. I pray that God grants you whatever you're looking for. May God give you the blessing that you're praying for. May God give you the courage inside your spirit so that you can pray more until you get an answer. So that you can pray on until you get an answer. I pray that God give you the strength and ability for you now to give up until you get what you're looking for, until God give you the blessing. Because from the day you start to pray, God releases a blessing. So I pray that God give you the strength and the courage and the faith that you will wait until you get the blessing from God in the name of Jesus Christ. May God bless you. May God bless you in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for watching in the name of Jesus Christ I bless you may God bless you 
and keep you. May his face shine towards you and give you peace and prosperity in the name of Jesus Christ. I will see you again in my next video. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Get wisdom. Wear it up.